Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are building a complete end-to-end -end ETL pipeline with open source data stack. No managed services or vendor lock-in. We will use MinIO as our data source. It's an S3 compatible service. We will ingest data from MinIO with the help of Airbyte and load it into a Postgres database. Using dbt, we will transform this data into a final reporting layer as dimensions and facts. We will use Airflow to orchestrate the whole ETL pipeline. By the end, you'll have a fully functional ETL pipeline running locally. A few housekeeping and installation notes. We covered min IO installation using the Docker a number of times. You can follow this video to set up min IO. Link is in the description below. We recently covered a new version of Airbyte installation using the command line utility. You can follow the step-by-step -step guidelines in this video to set up Airbyte or use the Docker Compose to install it on Docker. Here is the recent Airflow installation video. We installed Airflow using Docker Desktop. Finally, Postgres installation is covered here. I will link all the related videos in the description below. Also, the related text guide with links to all the videos is on the channel's website. MinIO is a high-performance S3 compatible object storage solution you can run anywhere cloud or local. It's perfect for storing Parquet, CSV, or any unstructured raw data. Create a bucket, for example raw sources, and upload your Parquet files in their respective folders. Data files are available on GitHub. Link to repo is down below. Once all the files are loaded in this bucket, your data is now stored and ready for ingestion. Keep your min I.O. credentials and endpoint handy for the next step. Airbyte is an open source EL tool that excels at connecting to modern data sources and loading into data warehouses, including support for S3 compatible storage. Let's configure min I.O. as a source in Airbyte. Launch the Airbyte instance and login. Go to Airbyte UI and create a new source. Select Amazon S3 as a source. Provide the bucket name where your files are stored. Under the list of streams, we choose the format. From the dropdown, we will choose Part K. We provide a name for this stream. In addition, we enable the Convert Decimal to Float option. Under the Globs option, we provide an asterisk .part K along with file name. Here we can provide glob style patterns rather than a specific path for every file. Under the glob section, you can find the various patterns. Days to sync means Airbyte sync will only read files that are modified within the last three days. You can switch to a suitable interval. In the access key and secret key, we provide the min IO credentials. Similarly, we provide the min IO endpoint as the IP and port. We specify a region. Under the delivery method, we select the replicate records. This option loads the actual data rather than a copy of the file content. We perform this action for all the source files. We click the set up the source button to complete the source file connection between S3 and Airbyte. This can take some time as it is testing the S3 configuration details. Once this completes, we create a destination. This connects our sources to our destination. Click the New button. Here we select the Postgres as our target database. We provide the hostname or IP address. The default port is 5432. Database and schema name. Finally, the user and the password. Once we click the Setup Destination, it will verify the connection details. Let's connect our source to our destination. We create a new connection. Select one source at a time and map to the Postgres destination. This will get the source file schema details and create the destination table based on it. For this part, make sure both the min IO and Postgres services are running. Depending on the sync mode, it may ask us to identify the primary key. 
any column that uniquely identifies each row. I will select the appropriate column and click Finish. We can provide a meaningful connection name. Add a tag and select Schedule Type. I will select the manual. We repeat this step for all of our sources. Once all the sources are mapped to a destination, we can trigger the sync for one of the connections to make sure our setup is correct. We can click the timeline and view the logs as the sync is progressing. Once this is done, it will provide an overview of records loaded and how long it took to process these records. Our extract and load part is configured. Now we need to set up the DBT. Make sure you have Python installed in your environment. I have covered Python installation in this video in case you need to set this up. Along with that, you will need DBT Core and DBT PostgreS adapter libraries installed. Let's create a virtual environment for our DBT project. We will issue the following command to create it. Our virtual environment is created. Let's activate the virtual environment. This command activates our environment. Now we can install the required libraries in this environment. This is the command to install them. Once these libraries are installed, we can check the version to confirm them. If you see the DBT version and the adapter listed, then we can move on to the next step. Now we create a new DBT project with the DBT in a command. We provide a name for this project and select the database for this project. In our project directory, let's update a few configurations. In the project YAML file, we update the materialization to table and save the tables in different schemas based on the folders. We add the packages YAML and profile YAML files to our project. In the packages YAML file, we import the various packages. In the profile YAML file, we define configuration for the Postgres. For this, you will need your Postgres instance details handy. We can test the database configurations with the dbt debug command. This will test the database configurations. All checks are green. We are set in terms of setting up this project. For Docker, replace the localhost after host with the Postgres server IP. Let's create the staging models. First of all, we need to define the sources, so we create a source YAML file. In this file, we define the sources, we provide a name for this source. We can list the table name. Once we are done listing all the tables, we can move on to defining our staging models. This is three-tier architecture. You can refer to the first layer that Airbyte loads as raw sources. From these source tables, we develop staging tables or models as DBT refers to them. And finally, the actual reporting table, which we can model using dimensional modeling, dimensions and fact tables. The concept is similar to the medallion architecture if you are familiar with it. It contains bronze, silver and gold layers. The bronze layer is where we land all the data from external source systems. In the silver layer, the data from the bronze layer is matched, merged, conformed, and cleansed. The gold layer is for reporting and uses more denormalized and read-optimized data models with fewer joins. The final layer of data transformations and data quality rules are applied here. We follow the same design pattern. We will define the second layer, I will refer to it as staging. We create a folder in our project called staging. In the model file, we issue a select statement and select all columns from the desired data table from the sources. Name of this model file appropriately so it identifies the staging model. It is a SQL file with .SQL extension. We will remove the example model. Now we can update the schema YAML file and list the table and columns for this staging model. I will create the staging models for all of our sources. The completed project is on GitHub, so you can view the definition of each model. I will list all the staging models in the schema YAML file. This is the completed schema YAML file.
Before running the dbt project, let's install the dbt packages. Reissue a dbt debs command. This installs the packages. We can run the dbt run command and it will compile and build the models in the Postgres database. We can connect to the Postgres database. Let's launch the database client. Log in and select your database and expand the target schema. We can expand the schemas to view our tables. We see our stage sales table. We can query it using SQL. We review the data and table structure to make sure it matches the definition of the staging model in dbt. Let's add a marts folder in the dbt project and create the dimension and fact tables. We have the dimensions and facts defined in the SQL files. We add the columns and table definition in the accompanying YAML files. Plus, we define the data quality tests in the YAML files. These YAML files are also used to create the project documentation by dbt. This is the completed MART schema for the data analysis and reporting. We are done with the dbt project definition. We can preview the Airflow DAG that will orchestrate the whole process. We have a task for each of the Airbyte connections. They run in parallel. Following this, we have the dbt run and test commands. In the DAG, we import the required libraries. We pull the Airbyte credentials from the variables and define dbt location. In Airflow, under the variables, we define the Airbyte API endpoints. We have an endpoint for the connections and a second one for the jobs. We store the password and user ID in variables as well. In the DAG, using a function, we get the Airbyte connections using the tag. We utilize the endpoint and make an API call. This function returns all the connection IDs. Next, we trigger the Airbyte sync using the connection ID. We provide this function, the connection ID, and make the API call. From the API response, we get the job ID and return it. Once the connection sync is triggered, we pull the API for the status of the sync. We check for the following statuses in a while loop. If status is succeeded, then we return success otherwise. We check for the in-progress statuses or failures. The following function creates and returns a new Airflow task for each given connection ID. For each ID, we trigger the Airbyte sync and then call the wait for sync function to pull Airbyte until the job finishes. In the DAG, we call the getConnection function. It fetches all Airbyte connection IDs that have that tag name. The list comprehension calls the makeAirbyteTask function with a connection ID, and each Airbyte connection gets its own task and registers them. Airflow knows about each task and can run them in parallel. Following this, we execute the dbt run command with the project directory and then the dbt test command. Finally, we list the tasks in order of execution. Let's go ahead and trigger this DAG and view it in action. Our Airbyte syncs are all triggered in parallel. We can bring up Airbyte and we should see all of the connections in sync mode. They are executing. We can switch back to Airflow and view the logs. We should be pulling the API to check for the status. Under the logs, we see the job status along with the ID. We will wait for the sync to complete. One of the jobs completed. After a few calls, we see the success flag and the task is completed. Airbyte sync is complete. We are moving to the dbt run task. It ran pretty quick. We see that it is running dbt. It has found 13 models. We see the build log for each of the models and all completed successfully. We see that dbt test execution next. It has found 22 tests defined in the project, and they completed successfully. This is our completed DAG that orchestrates the entire pipeline using Airflow. We can bring our database management tool, refresh the schemas, and we should see the new Mart schema under Jaffleshop. Expand the table node to view the Mart's tables. We select from the tables to view the data and run some test or analysis queries. 
This is our complete ETL pipeline using open source data stack. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.